Alrighty kiddos, today we're going to be making this little clutch and I'm going to even have this decal here available for you. I'm going to show you how to make the strap. We're going to do it from start to finish. It's going to be a really long tutorial so um, you can check the description box below and I'll have it sectioned off so you can just click on the time that each section is done if you want to skip through the video. So let's get started. Okay, first of all, for the pattern pieces, I'm showing this here, and you're welcome to pause this part so that you can see the measurements that I used for mine. As for the other elements of this project, you can find um, a list in the description box below, and there will also be links if you would like to purchase some of this hardware and things that I'm showing here. So. Alright, for the pattern pieces, you're going to need two pieces of the interfacing and two pieces of fabric, one for the lining and one for the outside. And you will follow the measurements that you saw in the pattern that I drew in the beginning of the video. Um, so there's going to be a shorter side and a longer side here on the fabric pieces. I just left them long and didn't cut them until after I pressed on the interfacing. And if you're not familiar with how to use fusible interfacing, I do have a video and the link will be up here in the video box here somewhere and also in the description box below. So I'm just going to iron all the pieces together. I'm going to iron a piece of interfacing onto a piece of fabric on each one, wrong sides facing together, the shiny side of the interfacing and the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm going to do that and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is create that little piece for the D-ring that's going to be attached to the side of the bag so that you can put a wrist strap on it. And I'm doing about um, two and a half inches wide and just um, five or six inches long, but that's going to get cut down. I just don't like to under measure and, um, you know, so anyway, you can see here I'm just folding over um, about a half an inch or a third of an inch on the sides and then kind of gauging if it's going to fit that D-ring or not. And once I got it fit, I'm going to take it to the machine. And you can see there I sewed down the sides to make it look nice and neat. And now we're going to fit that D-ring on there. And what I'm going to do is kind of uh, fold over on that raw edge. But you're not going to see that raw edge in the back because we're going to sew it to the side of the bag. So once I've got this the way I want it, I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm just going to sew over that piece to keep it in place so that I can put it on the bag. You see there I just sewed a line across. So we're going to set that aside and we're going to start assembling the bag. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go around each edge that would be the top edges of the bag and that includes the lining and the outside. I'm going to fold over about half an inch, and that's just at your discretion. If you want to do a, a thicker fold, um, you know, that's, that's perfectly fine. It, it will change your measurements if you use the measurements that I've got here. It's going to make the bag smaller the more you fold over. But anyway, since we're dropping this lining in, we're going to do it this way just to make sure that it, it's easier to do in the end. If you try to fold all that top edge down and press it after you've got the bag assembled, you've got the side sewn, it's going to be harder to do. <clears throat> so now what I'm doing is I'm going to find the middle of the inside of the what will be the bag flap and I'm going to add um, one side of the magnet snap onto there. So I'm just finding the middle and I'm going down just a little ways. You don't want it right at the top edge. It'd be really difficult to sew past this. Once you drop that lining in, you've got to sew a top stitch to connect it. So you want to make sure you're a couple inches down from the top, maybe a little more. It just depends on where you want your snap. So I'm doing mine about an inch and a half, two inches from the top of the once it is folded. Do not do this before you fold and press. So you see here I've got my little magnet hooks and if you want to get your own little magnet hooks there is a link in the description box below. It is an affiliate link so just be aware of that. So I use the little washer there to mark the holes where I need to put them with my seam ripper. You want to be very careful of this part. You could poke yourself also. You don't want those holes to be ripped too wide or else it's just not going to last. 
So I'm just going to place that in there and then I'm going to get the washer and I'm going to take my little handy dandy hammer that I have had for about 20 years. Everybody asks me all the time, where'd you get that cute little hammer? I think I got it at Michael's about 20 years ago and I just knew it would come in handy and I've used it a lot over the years. So I'm just going to bang those prongs inwards. We don't want to do them outwards. I've done that in the past and it just looks really bad in the finished bag. So make sure it goes inwards. And here is my little butterfly decal. I'm just going to kind of find a placement for it here um, and go ahead and put it on the bag because I felt like it would be more difficult. would have been fun to break out my heat press and use it, but I just didn't want to do that for this little project. If you like this little decal, um, it is for sale and it will be for sale in my Etsy shop. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is join the sides of the bag together. And you're going to do that with all four. You're just going to put them together as, as they should go together. And once you're done doing that on the lining and the outside of the bag, you should have a bag when you're done, a little squared off bag. I love this technique because it just always turns out so neat. There's no worrying about cutting the, the bottom to make the corner square or any of that. It's, it's just really simple this way to do that T-shape with the bag. You just want to make sure that your lines are straight and everything's lined up as it should be. And the idea here is that um, when you sew all four of those sides, that back flap will naturally kind of have a little fold to it. So you can just drop the lining in there and just top stitch everything and it'll look all neat and pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to attach that little loop with that D-ring on it. And I'm just going to do that by putting it on there and making a, sewing a square around. Um, in hindsight, I wish I had put the D-ring facing up. I just, it was my plan in the beginning, but I got so into the project here that I just forgot about that step and didn't do it. That way I did it upside down. It just, it's your preference also. If you want the D-ring facing up, then you just make need to make sure that there's enough clearance so that you can sew that top stitch on that lining when you drop it in there. So if it's too high up, you know, it's not gonna work. So that's probably why just when, as I was doing this and thinking about it, I ended up doing it upside down. But it's just up to you which way you wanna do that. So since it's just for um, a wrist, a wristlet or a wrist strap, I didn't think it would make a big difference that it was upside down. So anyways, moving on. This might have been the most difficult step of this bag. I'm going ahead and dropping that lining in there and I'm going to pin everything together and then I'm going to place the other half of the snap closure on the outside of the bag which would be the front where the, the fl inside flap would meet the outside. So it was a little tricky doing it. I wanted it to be neat. I wanted it to be lined up right so I really had a, a difficult time with this and I worked on it pretty hard and I had to make sure the bag was just lined up perfect so that once I got that on there I could just go ahead and begin um, putting everything else together. So you see there how those folds did work out on the sides the way I wanted them to. I'm really proud of that. I was like, hey, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but it did. So you see I just put a little dab of chalk on the um, snap closure that was already there and I kind of let it um, hit the bag there where it should be. And so I'm going to do the same thing I did with the snap closure piece on the flap. And I know it's difficult to see here, but it's really difficult to film that and get it right at the same time. So I apologize, but you get the gist. You know what I'm doing here. Alright, so now that I've got both pieces of the snap on there, the last step for the bag is just to top stitch everything 
and you want to be very careful at this step and always make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end. You don't want this to come loose if you're going to sell it and the buyer washes it and it hasn't been backstitched. I can promise you it'll come loose. Um, on the top, the flat part of the bag, you will see here that I'm actually going to go in and do a double line. I don't have a double needle, so I just did it by um, eyeballing it. I kind of lined up the edge of the presser foot on the first line to make the second line. And uh, it, it, it's a little wonky, but it's still pretty. I still like the effect. I like the look of the double line. I feel like it gave it a much neater um, ending. So I'm going to do all of that and get all of that sewn together. And the bag part will be finished. And then we can move on to making the wrist strap. I'm really loving how this bag turned out. Um, it was actually pretty easy to sew. There wasn't um, too much thickness in the layers so that it just, everything just went pretty smooth. I did break a needle um, through the process, but that was because there were some pretty thick materials there. So you just want to be careful and you always want to make sure you're using the correct needle for the fabric that you're using. It, it does make a difference. So there's the finished bag. I actually went in and hand sewed the cord, the sides to pinch them together. I may go back in with some liquid stitch or something and fix that. But anyways, let's move on to the strap. So I have a piece of fabric here that is approximately two and three quarter inches wide by about um, 12 inches long. And this is going to be the wrist piece, and we're going to do this with a swivel hook. So it's a little bit of a different method than just using the, the other hardware that you clamp on there. And I like to press the sides just a, a, a little bit at a time and, and you see me checking the, the measurements there. You definitely don't want that swivel hook piece to be on there too loose. It just doesn't have the right feel. You don't want it to be too tight either because then the fabric bunches up and looks terrible. So I just always use um, the swivel hook. I keep it there with me to make sure that the measurements are right. And now I'm going to sew down both sides to give it a nice neat look. And then you will see what I will do is I will take the piece and butt the ends together and use a zigzag stitch to kind of hold them together. I didn't get to film that part. Unfortunately, my camera died and I had to charge it up. So I apologize, but you will see that here in a moment. And I think you'll get the idea of what I did there. Alright, so we're going to have to have a little piece of fabric to cover up that ugly zigzag stitch that I'm, I'm going to make on the end of this. And what I'm going to do is figure out where I want that swivel hook. And for that part, you do need to go ahead and put your swivel hook on the piece. And then see, um, I was kind of figuring out how to do this. I actually um, did it a different way and it wasn't going to work. So I had to undo it with my seam ripper and do it this way. And you want to make sure that those um, ends line up, that they're evenly, um, the even width. So I did go back in and trim that little piece off that was a little wonky on mine later. But uh, you can see here, what you're going to do is you're going to fold it over and then the two raw ends are going to be tucked inside of the wrist strap. And you're going to sew a square all around that just to close it up and make everything look nice and pretty. Okay, so if you enjoyed this tutorial and you like this little bag, you can purchase the bag in my Etsy shop. The link will be in the description box below. I use all the proceeds from the things that I make and I sell in my Etsy shop to get more equipment. I am currently trying to procure a new sewing machine and a new printer. I'm gonna go with an eco printer so that I don't have to buy ink all the time. So anyway, check out my Etsy shop. Thank y'all. Peace.
Bye-bye.